The time has come for another episode of Salt Air. Now, I'm really excited about this episode. I'm sorry that we missed out last week because of the holidays, but we've got a lot going on now. We're going to be talking about a retrospect on everything that's happened inside of the Salt community with Salt Stack. Well, not everything. We'd be here for days or months. Uh, but, it, but what's happened over the past year so that we can get a good view of the progress that we've seen in 2012 and get pumped up for another year of a lot more excitement and progress. So, let me get the presentation going. All right. 2012, in retrospect. Now, fortunately, the world didn't end a few days ago, and so we're able to keep on developing and keep on and continue making fantastic software. Now, a lot, and I mean a lot, has happened in 2012 for SaltStack. This has been one of the most exciting years of my life and one of the most exciting times um, for getting for getting software out there, getting building community and building everything that we've that we've put together. So let's talk about some of these things that we've got. So SaltStack has grown dramatically, and we're just going to talk about a couple of the facets in which SaltStack has grown over the past year. So. We're going to talk about the community growth, which has been explosive. Talk about the fact that we are now justified as one of the largest open source communities in the world and um, one of the largest, if not the largest, community in some of the spaces that we are in. We're going to talk about the new projects that have come out in 2012 and one new project that we hope we'll get out just before the end of the new year, but uh, we might not make it. <laughs> We're going to go over how the code has grown over the past year. We're going to talk about how SaltStack and the Salt community has developed huge amounts of code that have enabled us to solve all sorts of problems in, in the, the systems management space in a very little amount of time. We're going to go over a few of the ways that, that SALT and SALT stack have been publicly recognized. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about how the SALT stack company has grown and where we're going in that direction. All right. The community. Now, near the end of 2011, there were 17 people who had committed code to SALT. Today, according to Olo, while well, their last metric was run five days ago, they say 250 contributors. So we have roughly 250 people who have committed code to SALT um, during the lifetime of the project. The project isn't even two years old, and that makes us an extremely large developer community. We've built out the core dev team. We've got a lot of people um, involved with commit access to, to the SALT repository. A lot of people who have been very heavily involved in the development beyond just small additions every now and then. In 2011, we had less than 30 people in IRC. Um, I'm saying that from memory. I actually think there were a lot less than 30 people in IRC in 2011. Today, we've been breaking over about 175 people in IRC. And the channel has become extremely active and much more, uh, much more helpful than it has been in the past, despite the fact that, unfortunately, I have very little time to get in there. In 2011, we had less than 50 people on the mailing list. As of this morning, we have a little over 500 people on the mailing list. Um, another metric that I didn't mention here is that... At the end of 2011, we had somewhere in the realm, if I'm not mistaken, of about 50 to 100 watchers on GitHub. Right now, 
Well, before I started this broadcast, we were at 998. So if we haven't passed 1,000, then call up some buddies to go and hit that star button on GitHub so we can pass 1,000 stars. But that's some very substantial growth over just this last year. Now, in 2012, we've had a number of new projects come, in, come into the SaltStack organization. So Salt Cloud was initially released in July of 2012. Its uh, capabilities were very limited, nowhere near as powerful as it is today. Salt API was released in October. I was very excited to find out that there are people already using the Salt API to build tools on top of Salt. Uh, this is something that we were really excited to see. Um, a consulting company out of Norway had put together a, a piece that, uh, that actually does virtual machine management using Salt and all of the logic was happening in JavaScript with jQuery. It's also noteworthy that the Salt UI project, which we have put a lot of study, a lot of effort, and a lot of um, concern into, um, is going to have its initial release fairly soon. I know that we've had many delays on the Salt UI, but we felt it was necessary to make sure that we got that architecture down correct. One of the benefits of a lot of Salt projects that we've spun up is that they're able to follow a lot of the architectural principles of Salt itself. But with Salt UI, it's all written in JavaScript, and so a lot of the constructs that we use in Python aren't directly applicable. And so there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of work trying to figure out the best way to make the UI happen. But we've come to a place with its design that we feel very, very comfortable with and we're very, very excited about. Salt Bootstrap started inside of the Salty Vagrant project uh, back in September. And only recently it was pulled out of Salty Vagrant to be a standalone Bootstrap script. Now, that's available. You can download it from Salt Stack or from bootstrap.saltstack.org. Finally, during 2012, we brought the Salty Vagrant project under the Salt Stack umbrella. This has been, again, a very exciting, very powerful project, which has really helped us to move salt development further, faster, and assisted us in many, many ways. So again, a big, big thanks to Alec uh, for putting together this, putting to, putting together and maintaining Salty Vagrant. Now, a little bit of talk about how the code itself has grown over the past year. Um, at the beginning of 2012, SALT was, frankly, not a whole, not very special compared to where it is now. SALT consisted, overall, of about 20,000 lines. A little over 10,000 of those were code, something like 12,000 lines of code. Uh, SALT at the end of 2011 was primarily a remote execution engine. It only had a few execution modules. It, uh, we were only beginning to scratch the surface of the capabilities of SALT states. They were still very, very rough as far as their actual execution. It's also noteworthy that right at the beginning of 2012 is when I started working on SALT full time. Um, and burning through savings to try and get the project up to the point where we could have a viable company and a viable business that I could feed the family with. And I'm really excited about the fact that this year has been much, much more successful in code growth and in, well, in, in growth in general than I had originally imagined. If somebody had told me at the beginning of uh, 2012 that by the end of the year we we're going to have over 250 people contributing code to SALT, that the code base would grow to over 40,000 lines of code, that we would have the user base that we have today and be in major enterprises. I don't think that I would have believed them. This has been an extremely exciting time. Over 100 new uh, execution modules have been authored. This includes support for 
everything from things like the FreeBSD package manager um, down to supporting advanced features and functionality inside of things like Redis. Over 20 new state modules have been authored. I, I didn't go back and check what the number was at the end of 2011, but from memory, I think it was somewhere around the realm of six to six to ten state modules existed. Right now, we're I believe we're at 34 state modules, and right now on execution modules, I believe we are at 126. Now, new modular backends. I've been really excited about the fact that the loader interface inside of SALT has been able to scale out and build more and more modular interfaces. Things like the external authentication interface that allows us to hook into uh, virtually any authentication medium that is external to SALT. Things like the brand new file server uh, modular interface that I, that I added yesterday that I'm really excited about. We're going to talk about that a little more later on and what's coming up in uh, 0 0.12, of course, because we always talk about the new and exciting. But so many of these new modular backends, like the external pillar, it's also noteworthy that pillar didn't exist at the beginning of 2012. Many of the features that we rely very heavily upon did not exist at the beginning of the year. During 2012, we have, re we have had 13 SALT releases. I'm thrilled at the fact that we've been able to continually deliver releases of SALT on a regular basis, that we have rarely had to wait more than four to six weeks. Actually, I think there's only one release of this year that took us more than six weeks to get out, and that we've been able to continually deliver new features and bug fixes to the community. And hopefully with our new release cycle, we're going to see somewhere in the realm of 30 or 40 releases next year, potentially. All right, huge code growth, huge community growth. And I can't, I can't again tell you as the community how grateful I am to everybody who has, who's put their time into the, into the development of what is becoming a fantastic, popular, and very widely used uh, project. Now, there's a couple things where we got some recognition in, 20, in 2012 that I want to mention really quickly. We should probably, if anybody knows of any other recognition or articles that have happened in SALT development, then let us know. So one thing that I was really excited about is that GitHub, just a few days ago, put up their Octoverse, an Octoverse post on their blog. Now this post outlined some of the most active and some of the most popular projects on GitHub. Right now, GitHub hosts over 4.6 million Git repositories. And right now, SaltStack was listed by GitHub as the eighth largest uh, unique contributor community. We're right behind OpenStack. Now, we've done that, and SaltStack only has uh, let's see, we've only got four people right now that we're paying money to develop. And the fact that, that we are almost as big of a community as OpenStack, which has been around a year longer than SaltStack and has received huge amounts of funding, uh, blows my mind that we've been able to make it up that high, to be number eight in community size and contributor size out of 4.6 million repositories on GitHub. So that's one of the biggest triumphs that I think that we've seen as far as uh, community recognition, community growth, and our ability to continually deliver fresh software. I, I just can't tell you how excited I am, how excited all of us have been here at the office, how excited a lot of, a lot of you out there have been, because uh, just a lot of people jumping up and down over this one. Now, we were named Rookie Project of the Year in, in 2011 and, and given that award in early of this year by Black Duck. Um, I've mentioned this award a lot of times. I've, I've been really excited about it. I am amazed at the fact that when they reached out to SaltStack, we were 
a, a tiny fraction of the size of a project that we are now, a tiny fraction of the capabilities that the software has now, and that and that this this love these things that gave us early recognition have really helped catapult us uh, into the limelight and into recognition. So I can't continue to thank the guys over at Black Duck enough, not only for the uh, for the award, but also for uh, Olo.net, which is something that I use almost every day to help keep track of who's contributing, who's new, and where everybody is, <coughs> and what's going on inside of our continually and very quickly growing community. Finally, I want to mention the fact that, again, that we were on the cover of Linux Journal in November. Uh, that was a fantastic and exciting thing. Another big thanks go, goes out to Ben Hosmer for putting together that article. The recognition that we've received hopefully is going to be a fraction of what we receive next year. We have done, as a company, we have done no marketing. We have gone to a couple of conferences. We have, um, our websites don't look that great yet. We really haven't made a big push there. But a lot of what we've been working on inside of the SaltStack company is building out our marketing strategy to get wider recognition for this project. And so hopefully at the end of next year when we talk about recognition, it's going to take more than one slide for us to go over the events and the exciting things that we have planned for 2013. I'm going to talk a little bit about the growth of the company. Now, I've made no qualms about the fact that I really enjoy talking about SaltStack as a company in the light of the community that we have around it. I want to re-emphasize over and over and over again how important it is for us to make sure that SaltStack as a company is recognized and respected by the community and that we as a company recognize, respect, and adore the work inside of the community. So, again, that's why I love talking about what's happened in our company. So let me give you a, a quick recap over what's happened inside of SaltStack during 2011, or sorry, 2012. I founded the SaltStack LLC in December of 2011. As some of you in the U.S. may know, making an LLC is a very, very easy thing to do. It only takes a few minutes, and it was just the right thing to do to make sure that we could start receiving some payments. We were able to get our first service engagements in January of 2012. Um, one of those involved Jive Communications and going out and helping them with their initial SALT setup. Again, big thanks goes out to some of these companies that took the risk very early on, like Jive Communications and Heartflow, coming in and not only uh, taking the risk of using such new software, but helping us as a, co as, uh, as a community and as, and as a company grow. Um, by partnering with us and in, in paying us for services. I brought in um, my business partner, Mark Chen, in April of 2012. I spent a long time looking for somebody who would be capable of understanding open source, who would be capable of doing the things I can't do, and who would be somebody who I felt I could work with and who wouldn't, and, and who wouldn't create internal conflict with the company, which is something that is very, very common, especially in startups and especially in open source startups. I'm happy to report that Mark has been one of the most fantastic business partners somebody could ask for. He's been excited about continuing community growth and he's completely on board with the fact that we've got a community plus company strategy. Now we converted the, co we converted the SaltStack LLC into a corporation and, to, and brought on our first funding in August, which allowed us to open up the salt stack office and bring in our first hires. As I mentioned before, we've got a couple people working for us right now. I'm going to talk about the fact that we're looking to hire more people uh, later, la a little later in the presentation. But that's why Dave Boucher or Utah Dave, Joseph Hall or Tech Hat on GitHub, and Seth House were our first employees who had frankly been waiting for months and months for me to get the first funding and get enough money in the door so that we could bring these guys on full time. 
All right. So a lot of excitement on the company front. We've got a lot planned for next year. Everything is moving forward at a, at a staggering pace, and we're doing our best to just keep up with the momentum. Now, that we've talked about the growth of 2012. We're going to talk a little bit about the new and exciting things that are emerging from the salt mine. Some of the new features that we've got ready for 0.12.0 and that we've put a lot of work and a lot of thought and a lot of effort into. So, I've talked a lot about file servers in the past and about the salt file server. One of the ideas that I've had for a while and I've been beating around in my head trying to figure out the best way to do it has been to take the file, the salt file server and directly integrate it with a distributed <coughs> sorry, excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold today and directly integrate the salt file server with um, a version control system so that you don't need to be checking out your git uh, all of your salt states from Git directly onto your salt master all the time and maintaining different subdirectories for different environments. And so what I've done is I've modularized the file server so that now we can build new file server backends that operate on the master in a modular way, the same way that we build all the other different modular add-ons for salt, so states and, modu and execution modules and all these things. Uh, and I've added the, uh, the beginning. It's currently not very well tested. <laughs> but we should have it up and running soon to a beta state. But the beginning of a Git backend, which allows you to pass in a list of uh, Git remote, remote repositories and then SALT itself does all of the management of those repositories for you. Also, Git branches and Git tags are recognized in the same way as environments are recognized. So that allows you to say, oh, well, I'm going to maintain my SALT states in a Git repo, and I'm going to have a branch for development, a branch for production, a branch for whatever. And we can just keep maintaining them in branches and give no never mind to ongoing maintenance of those of those repositories. So I'm really excited about this. I've had my head down in uh, in the Git Python API a lot over the past over the past couple of weeks trying to figure out the best way to go about doing this. But so we're going to see that hit Git head here in the next couple of days. Um, to be more stable and get some docs up on how to use it so people can start trying it out and finding out where it's broken <laughs> before we uh, before we stamp it onto the release. Another thing that I'm really excited about, the majority of our community right now is using SALT on Linux. Uh, if, if we were to take a quick anecdotal cross-section of the platforms that are being used, our dominant platform right now is probably Ubuntu, and that's then followed, followed by Red Hat and CentOS and then followed by um, a number of other distributions. But it's still dominantly Linux-based. Now, Dave Boucher started Windows support inside of Salt a long time ago. And we've had rudimentary Windows support for a long time. It's always been difficult to get Salt installed on Windows because of the dependencies. But number of newer features and newer capabilities are making Salt easier and easier to get up and running on Windows, and we've recently tasked Dave Boucher with uh, putting all of his time towards uh, Windows management now that he's spent more time getting familiar with uh, all of the internals of SALT. And so one of the first things that he did and has done, which is coming in 0.12, is something I'm really excited about, is uh, Windows software management. And so basically what Dave has done has created a very salty uh, package repository for Windows applications. So it's a system that allows you to find how Windows applications are going to be installed in very simple YAML using the, the same SLS uh, format that, that we're all used to so that it's very easy for people to come in and define packages for Windows. 
We've also started working on a window, a, a public Windows package repository, so that we'll be able to maintain a public Windows package repository up in Git that can be directly hooked into via the Salt Master, and then easily extended with in, in with internal package repositories. The goal of this package management system is to make package management as simple and easy to do as possible on Windows systems so that the, the generation and building of these Windows packages has been made to be very straightforward and very easy to do, very simple to pick up on. We've already built packages um, in our back office here that we're still experimenting on for things like Firefox and Audacity and OpenOffice and, and VLC and a number of other uh, <coughs> and a number of other projects and programs. So really excited about what we're seeing on the Windows front. We're also going to be putting a lot more effort into delivering a unified Windows installer for Salt, making it substantially easier to get Salt bootstrapped on Windows systems. All right. Finally, we've also been putting a lot of effort into adding low-level operation support for SALT. And what we're doing here is we're doing a lot of management of things that are generally managed by an installer. And the reason for this is that we want to make sure the SALT is capable and powerful enough to break that barrier. One of the problems that we run into a lot when we're deploying new systems is we say, okay, what's our pre-salt environment? What's everything that we need to do to this system to get it to the point where salt can take over and then finish the configuration and setup of the systems? And so what we're doing is we're trying to, to figure out the best ways and we're working towards pushing that entry point further and further back, making it so that salt's capabilities are more and more extended. And so that's why you've probably seen some new E2FS modules coming in, IP tables modules, grub modules. A lot of these sorts of things have been getting pushed up uh, into our execution module system. And we're going to be seeing more and more states coming through. And just as a quick reference, we do have a fantastic new IP tables module, which so far is working pretty darn well. And we've been really excited about its capabilities. Okay, now we're going to highlight Aaron T Tiggert again. Everybody, I, everybody, I highlight. I, I know I'm messing up on their names. Um, Aaron has been fantastic. He's over with Firehost, and they have been putting to, they have put together a huge amount of work to help us move Salt forward. The Windows integration in Windows systems has been something that Aaron has done a ton of work on and helped us a great deal and also has helped us get uh, substantiate the fact that there is substantial interest in Windows integration for SALT. Aaron put together the binary build system. If you're not familiar with it, take a look at the ESKEY build system uh, deep inside of SALT that allows you to do some pretty cool things when it comes to managing and distributing your, uh, your minions. Aaron has substantially refined the grains generation. The grains generation has become much, much faster uh, than what it was before Aaron came in and added a number of refinements. He added the external pillar interface for MongoDB so that you can maintain pillar information inside of, inside of a Mongo database. He's also been fantastic on the, on the top of and helping us with a lot of enhancements and bug fixes on, on the inside of SALT. And he's been very active in Pound SALT on Freenode in our IRC channel and on the mailing list. So big thanks goes out to Aaron. All right. Now I'm going to mention this. We are hiring a few more people over at SALT Stack. We've interviewed a lot of people. We're in the process of interviewing a lot of people. Uh, it's, it's really tough to f and very important to find the right people to bring in early on. These early people define a lot of what the company 
uh, turns out to be. So right now we are looking for JavaScript and Python developers, people who are good with the front end but still have a, still have a good strong understanding of Python. Well, as you may guess, everybody that we bring in from an engineering perspective for SaltStack is going to need to have at least some understanding of Python <laughs> since it is something that we were very heavily steeped in. But so we're looking for some front end people. We're also looking for a few people who have a uh, more in-depth understanding of C and C++ to work in uh, some of the more experimental areas that we're pushing forward. And we're also looking, we're also looking to build out our QA team so that we can build more tests and continue to work towards making salt more and more and more stable. If you're interested in working for a company where the vast majority of your time is going to be spent writing open source code, writing, writing for salt, and doing, frankly, what I think is the most exciting thing in the world, which is writing a ton of cool Python code, then send me your resume because we're actively interviewing and we are looking to expand because we've got to keep up with a lot of the demand that's beginning to come down the pipe and we've got to make sure that we've got guys on staff who understand SALT in depth much more than much more than most do so that they can understand how to use SALT to solve some of the more exotic problems and help us understand how to make SALT solve more and more problems as we as we push forward and we try and we continue to try to be on the on the bleeding edge on the knife's blade of infrastructure management in the future. Now, that's it for Salt Air this week. Hopefully uh, we'll, we won't stumble and we'll get another one out to you next week. I, I'm debating about changing the day and time when we do this. My Fridays keep ending up being very, very busy, which is why I've missed a couple of weeks in the past. And so we may uh, go back and decide to change the time that we're going to be doing Salt Air, but it's still all available on YouTube afterwards anyway. All right. So that's it for this week. We've got a lot coming down the pipe for 2013. We've got a lot coming down the pipe for the next big feature release of SALT. And again, I can't thank everybody enough for the number of people who have rallied around the project, for the number of people who have put so much work and so much effort into helping us all make SALT one of the most fantastic and powerful systems that we have out there today. So, until next time. <laughs>